Okay, so with Excel, do you have to go out, buy the horses, take the punt, and then just hope that you're going to get people that are going to take yeah, them? Yeah, of course. Um, that's the way we kind of went down always. You see, it's, I think it's hard to say to people, right, we're going to go and this is what we're going to do. We're going to buy, go to these sales. Can you give us this up front? This is what we're going to do. So instead, we bought them that. We buy the horses and try and, and sell them by going to yard mornings. Richard Hannon, um, in the this year was great for us. He, we went up there and had a great morning, and he, all the yearlings were going around as they were, and and it kind of just went from there. And people buy the shares, and if if they want to, and if they don't, then it then it is what it is. I was the four yearlings that we had for the two year old campaign. That's just that just went on. Um, we sold some, and we and we sold didn't. I was quite fortunate that. Now it's come back in the long run. I, we bought um, what I called the other side. Um, we had the brother Starboy, and the other side was was the sister full full sister. So we took her, and she's turned out to be quite nice. She won the first time out for us, and um, we'll put her away now for for the three year old campaign. Okay, so have you got your head in the in the stud book in the the auction catalogs, or do you employ somebody to? No, just that's just me and me and Paul. Uh, that's just me and Paul in the auction auction catalogs and, and go through there. Um, and with the stud books, we kind of just keep an eye on the, what we have bought before and, and what works and who, who we've bought off and, and, and go from there because that, that's that's the best way. You've got to try and find a rough diamond if it's not possible to compete with the with the big boys. It really isn't. Okay, you say you like a punt. Well, that's the biggest punt of the lot, isn't it? Yeah, that's the biggest punt. That is the biggest punt. You see... You've got the oh, biggest punt. You, the thing is, when you line up, you 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 get buy a horse for say forty thousand, for example. Then you have got to add twenty five thousand on top, and for the for a year's training bills, pretty much there there's sixty five grand before before you've started, um, and then you've just got to have a lot of luck. You've got to have a hell of a lot of luck, and and I think that's that's part and parcel of this game. But would I change it? No chance. Have you had uh, any particularly bad burnt fingers? Yeah, we bought a, bought one one for fifty thousand with Ed Walker, and unfortunately, it just didn't work out. It it, it was on about three or four people's um, book list for for the horse, and when they go and obviously go through the yearlings and, and pick it out, and unfortunately, he was he was no good. But there's been a couple, like I say, there'd, there'd be three or four that you think is no wouldn't be no good. And then then I had a a lot of luck when I bought another bat. I paid a paid. Big money for another bat, and he repaid me in in a lot of ways. He took me, he took me basically around the world. He won in Dubai for me. He won in Turkey for me. Um, when he won at Chester for me, we landed a pump with him at Chester. Um, so is is that the ups and downs like like there isn't anything? But would like I said, would I change it? No chance. So is landing a punt a big part of the syndicate? Is that part of the excitement, right? You oh, really, the syndicate. So actually, let them know what what it is and stuff like that. But when it come with another bat, he was he was my he was mine. I, I sold about three or four shares to to my friends, and and that was it. And then when we had the punt for him, it was it was us, and this is what we're gonna do. Yeah. And you're also not frightened to travel your horses. You mentioned there that you've won a bull. No, no. But the prize money is where, as I took another bat to Turkey, um, Oshie Murphy rode him for us, for George Scott. He'd had, he'd come over from, from Ireland, he'd come fifth and second. He'd come over, he won for me first time out at Ripon, and won five lengths. Then ran at, ran at Ascot in the Windsor Castle, he'd come eighth. Then we went to Air to win with him, and he won there. Back to Ascot, he comes second in a listed race. Then we was looking at races to the end of the season. So he'd ran in, ran really well for me since he had him. He'd, apart from the Ascot, and he'd come eight. Look at the cars. There's like, nothing wrong on it. Someone got in touch. Said, look, there's there's a, a festival over in Turkey. It's a two-yard race. It's their group three, kind of our listed race. It's their centre. So we entered, and it was 185,000 euros to, to the prize pot. Was 115,000 euros to the winner. Well, you're not getting that here. You're not winning the Royal Lodge for 115,000 euros. Do you know what I mean? So, so that was it. That's that. That was the equivalent. So it's like right. Let's just go and chance her aunt. They. It was the total package of say 14,000 for for you to go over. Um, and they give you half the money back if you didn't finish in the in the top three, like in the prize money to cover it. So it's like well, we might as well. Let's just go. We've gone over there and we had to beat one of theirs. That was rated 110, and when you go over there, you don't really know about the um, 
their ratings as such, whether they stand up. We won by two, two and a quarter lengths. And it was a fantastic day. I went over there, me, me, the lads, took my wife. And it was fantastic. No, correct me if I'm wrong. I, I, this is just from the internet again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I read somewhere that you said that you think younger people associate horse racing with the older generation. Do you still think that, or is that what you said? Yeah, no, that's what it is. I, I, so I did say, and I do believe that now. I think mobile phones are destroying bookmakers, bookies, betting shops. I think as younger people do think older generation with betting shop. I like going in, in a betting shop. I like sitting down and having a chat with the old, older people. And, you know, good fun. They are good fun, but unfortunately, that that's the way that's the way it is. You do find, you don't find a lot. Of, you see a lot of younger people that get involved in racing and like to go to the race track and enjoy the day out and, and the fun that brings. But but the the real sport and the real real side of it is for the older generation. I do believe that. I think that's something that they are probably trying to work work hard on the change. But I think it will take time. Now that's interesting. That, you know that that is an observation because. As with professional football, it's mostly actually combatants in horse racing are fit young men or women, mm -hmm. you know, in their teens or their twenties. Yeah. So, why do you think it is that the younger generation of racing of sport fans don't can't associate themselves with those athletes as they can footballers? Is it a marketing thing? I think. So. Yeah, I think so. It's, uh, it must be. It must be. Why people don't? Don't associate them all in the same bracket, but I think you have to come. If you asked, if you asked people that the younger generation that had that come from racing backgrounds, then I think they would they would argue their case. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I think unless you kind of are born into that way, or, or you have a keen interest from the start and see how much they put themselves through, then then I think you'd, they'd realise. Maybe Panini should do jockey sticker books. Uh, some, <laughs> do you know what I mean? As some sort to exploit the exploit it, but there's so much that comes. It's the the great stuff that comes with racing. Unfortunately, that there's a lot of negativity that comes with it that that stands in its way. Now, do you, do you actively target your Excel shares at younger people if you can? Yeah, if you can. But we tried that at the start, and unfortunately, don't always. It doesn't always work. You try and make it price efficient for everybody and it is hard trying to attract the younger people it generally is it, it generally is hard and a lot of our owners are our older owners as much as we've tried to attract younger the younger generation it just sometimes it's just beating your head against against the wall now a lot of um players these days and back to football come from countries that yeah. probably don't have a tradition of racing at all yeah do you sort of actively try and say oh watch this you know get them interested and no not really it's not only the racing bit they might not have the racing background but you can have a you can have a bet and you can have a gamble on, on it do you know what i mean and if if they haven't like i say a lot of people say no do you know i've had no interest i've had no real interest having a bet i don't know how you get into that however taking them as a team day out to cheltenham or to chester or to races of course they think oh that's great fun and then maybe that's how you you have to get them involved but um, no, I haven't come across many many of the foreign lads that, that got involved. Right, does the, the buzz of a winner that you were involved in um, come anywhere close to scoring the winning goal in injury time in front of a capacity home ground? Ooh, uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. It does. I played, I'll take you back to when I played, when Miss Sophie Rose won at, at Worcester, we played Aston Villa on a Monday night. She ran on Wednesday at Worcester and played Chelsea on the Saturday. I scored two on the Monday night against Aston Villa and we won 2-0. And the feeling I had in the parade ring after the race, when she went past the was was very, very, very similar, very close. And that's the closest thing I've got to having the same feeling as scoring a goal. OK, and you were still obviously very active as a professional footballer, but is horse racing your second career in waiting when you retire? Um... I think so. In in a certain way, I'd like to go down the the, the breeding side. I've actually got to have a lot of luck. I don't really know, but I I think so. Yeah, I think it's something that I have a keen interest to doing and taking it to the next level. Okay, then what would be your ultimate racing ambition? My ultimate racing ambition. This is your, this is your final question. So you ultimate can... racing ambition. I would love to. I would love to have a winner on the biggest stage in June at Royal Ascot. That is my that is my biggest ambition. Of course that comes with a lot of luck. But if you could have a winner at, at Royal Ascot and be in there as an owner, 
that would be fantastic. Brilliant, Charlie Austin. I'm sure people want to bet against you. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, Simon. Cheers.